Okay, so this is my uh, impromptu mashing tutorial. Um, don't know if I'll actually post this, but I just wanted to get the way I mash out there just in case uh, people wanted to see it. I feel like double thumb mashing is pretty common, but most runners have their own little perks with it, so maybe this could help people. Um, I feel like this method's pretty easy to brain dead mash, at least like a consistent range of 11 to 13 per second, at least that tempo. And I think if you focus and go a little tougher, it's pretty easy to hit 14 to 15, but obviously still takes practice. Um, and I also want to preface this by saying that I think this does um, require you to get a little more rough with your controller, so if you're not comfortable with that, maybe you want to do that. Um, to start off, just to give a general concept of like the idea of what I'm going for, this is kind of a good video uh, that shows a good visual demonstration of exactly kind of what's going on. So this motion is pretty much what's happening currently. Go back real quick. Yeah, so this is basically the motion that's going on with the controller. Just imagine this is a game controller and imagine obviously that the red parts are the hands. So yeah, that's the basic concept of what I'm trying to do. So let me try to show that better in like an actual GameCube controller visualization. Okay. So, uh, it's, it's upside down. Uh, so, apologies for that, but whatever. It's the easiest way for me to do this. So what I like to do is, at least from this video, you can kind of see that for the most part, the left hand isn't moving. And that's pretty much true for me too. I mean, it's wouldn't be entirely true to say it's not moving at all, but this is kind of like the fixed point of this like setup for me. Like this is just solid grip, doesn't move, doesn't really do much work other than making sure that the controller has a solid foundation um, and it doesn't like go crazy um, and it stays put the way I want it to. So obviously you want to position your thumb of that hand that's holding it about a little bit on the left of the finger so that there's like, or left of the button so there's space for the other hand. And I like to make like a C shape with my middle finger and my thumb. That makes sense. Basically, my middle finger and the thumb are the claw from that visual demonstration from the video above. And then, if I were to face it sideways, I put it like this, with both sides hovering each side, so there's a gap in between, similar to the video. And then, in that position, I take the other thumb, place it over the button again, and then I get closer, and then once I start, I'm just basically doing that motion from the video and this speed on its own. I'm not going too fast, I'm not trying to go too fast, but I have no strain and this is a nice consistent speed to do something even like leaf hover in my opinion. Like it's not even that, like this is an easy way to get a good consistent mesh. So basically the idea here is that your fingers act as a hard stop and I guess the controller too in a sense. Once they collide, that's a hard stop. Like, you can't go any further up. You're holding this arm tight. So, like, bam. And, and this kind of little thud, like, yeah, it's stuck in place, but it kind of pushes your left thumb into the B button, and that is one of the presses. And then you go down with the thumb, and then your left thumb kind of lifts up, and your right thumb hits it, and that acts, acts as, like, the second hard stop on the opposite end of the min-max of the position, I guess, if you wanted to call it like that. So, like, min-max, min, like, you know... The hard stop stops you from overshooting, but it's also a really good vis like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know what the, like a word, like, similar to like visual or auditory, like the same, that same word for touch. It's a good like, thing that tells your brain, okay, I've hit this end point, it's time to go back up. So it's really easy to be like, okay, I hit the bottom, go the other way, I hit that side, go the other way. It's like really easy for your brain to understand, okay, I've reached the end of that motion. Let's go back up. It's a good sensory input, like a sensory thing to pick up, I guess, you know. There's not really much to think about that. Like, yeah, I guess you could say there's a rhythm, but you don't have to think about the rhythm. It's like, okay, I hit the end, let's go back up. I hit the top, let's go back down. Simple as that, you know. There's not much to think about here. I'm not really thinking about it. I'm just kind of just mashing like crazy, you know. It's not like I'm thinking about it as hard as like trying to keep a rhythm you can kind of just spam it and you'll still do pretty good um so that's basically how i like to do it and then 
I guess let me show what that looks like when I actually zombie hover. Okay, so I'm assuming I will lift off after this. Okay, so now I pause. And what I like to do is just a general tip, maybe if people want this. What I like to do is press A on an item so that, you know, when you press B, you don't unpause, you just go out of that text. And it gives you more time to get in comfortable and get in that position. I mean, this is a side note. I like to keep my elbows on the armrest. It's just a good stability and good posture, I think, to stay healthy. I think uh, trying to make sure you minimize your strain and your tensing up is very important. So just keeping your arms nice and relaxed, keeping your hands nice and relaxed. And I don't really recommend doing this per se. Like, yeah, you're going like this, but you can also kind of make it a wrist motion too if you really wanted to. That's what I sometimes do. Where it's just my wrist working, not so much my arm moving. Um, either one works in my experience, but uh, I think wrist is easier in the long run. But I think as a beginner, I could see that being a source of pain. So I'd be careful with that. So yeah, let's just go for it. And I'll show you. I'll try to match the same that I did earlier. This should be pretty decent. Like this is good enough for leaf hover for sure. Something like that. Way more than enough for more cover. And I'm not even going that fast. Like, I feel like you could hear it, maybe. I'm not going that fast. Maybe the mic's picking it up. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and also, this is on emulator, too, so... I think I'd be matching even better on console. So, like, as you can see... At least I would think my method is not too difficult. But obviously, at the end of the day, it's completely opinionated. Uh, it's objective, and, you know, people are different. You can maybe find a way that's more comfortable for you. Um, it's better for you. Um... I don't know. At the end of the day, whatever you're best with, you know. Whatever works for you. Uh, this is a side note, too. This is how I single finger mash. Uh, for like, things like lift off or Marth hover, I just... I thought I'd include this. I put my thumb over my index finger, over the B button, and then I just press it really fast. I can go pretty fast with this, too, sometimes, but way more strain right here. Way more difficult to hold for longer periods of time, and it's just not... Um, I don't recommend doing that, unless it's, like, for Marth hover, and you'd don't want to, you know, pause, stop, switch to two hand, you know, for such a short distance hover. But yeah, that's pretty much what I have for this. So yeah, I'll be done. I mean, I guess I can real quick, one last time, just make my camera bigger and then show a little bit, one more time mashing. So both fingers kind of hovering the button on each side, claw, middle finger, thumb, just to summarize, rock solid foundation right here. Uh, this finger, I kind of just stick out. It's not really doing anything. Same with this hand. My index finger sticks out. It's not really doing anything. I'm just trying to make sure this provides the foundation and this does most of the motion. And just the impact of the hard stop not only tells me to go the other way, but also helps connect the thumbs to the buttons on each successive motion. So, going to this. And there's like little to no strain in my hands. That could be due to me being used to it. Uh, obviously, so maybe... Take that with a grain of salt. But I feel like I'm not putting much effort into this at all. But I'm getting a consistent rhythm without really thinking about it. And this is more than enough for most basic applications for hovers and categories such as any percent when it comes to leaf hover and or um, more hover. So yeah, hopefully that helps. Uh, yeah, thank you.